get on it? Huh? Is it you get on it when you leave? I'm about to. We just put new uh, trailing arms in, so we're trying to make sure they hold up. <laughs> Hey guys, what's going on? Jeremy here, Nasty2SS. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. More videos coming soon. So before this video even starts, I'm going to go ahead and give a big shout out to Dynawax. You guys can see here in the background, this is my 2015 Chevrolet Camaro SS. So it is kind of in the garage here, tucked away in the shadows, but you guys can see super clean. I washed this yesterday and I've probably driven 50 miles on it since then but paint is still looking good obviously a little bit of dirt on top but look at that if you guys watched my last video you guys will see that I had a door ding right here um, went ahead and got that fixed the guy who dinged the door actually um, well I reached out to him and he said no problem he'd pay to have it fixed so I uh, really do appreciate that I actually put the Instagram name down to the guy who did the work on the car his name is Brian really good guy he had this thing popped out in five minutes very well priced he did an awesome job so make sure to check Brian out definitely make sure to check out Dynawax I'm gonna put a little uh, discount code link whatever right here also in the description if you guys want to copy and paste that into your browser so let's go ahead and get started on the video so here we are in my absolutely disgusting messy garage right here we've got the BMR trailing arms I'm going to put the, uh, the heck? Sounds like there's something moving in there. Y'all hear that? That's going to drive me nuts. Listen. Well, the other one doesn't do that. But anyways, that's weird. So BMR trailing arms here. You can see, got a nice little grease fitting to make things convenient. I'm going to show you guys how to grease this up too after the install. So here they are, both laid out next to each other in the messy garage. God, this garage is nasty. Besides the point, anyways, we've also got some polyurethane bushings right here. These little half bushings, basically, we're going to grease these. We're actually, we're going to grease the insides, um, put these in the spindle, and then run our little brass fitting through. Okay guys, so I went ahead and pulled the passenger side out, reinstalled the new trailing arm. Just wanted to show you guys the difference between the two. So here's our factory trailing arm. As you guys can see, big difference. As far as weight, the BMR definitely has a little bit more weight on it than the stock one, but that should kind of help with the wheel hop. Also got the polyurethane bushing right here on the spindle which I'll show you guys right now all right so here we are at the car see the inner side is in tightened down 85 foot-pounds here's our lower one now the bushing you can kind of see right up here at the top kind of a pain in the butt to get out I'm not even gonna lie to you guys I would honestly highly recommend um, just buying everything and putting it in all at once obviously trailing arms and the tow rods which I'll show you guys when we get to install on the other side. The bolt right here that goes into the spindle, really, really hard to get out with the control arm here in the way. I didn't feel like pulling all this junk out. Now, another thing as I'm sitting here on my garage floor, you don't have to take the wheel off. I find it a lot easier to get access to everything by doing that. So I'd recommend doing it. It takes an additional one or two minutes tops, God, probably a minute to pull off the wheel. So. I highly recommend doing that on this install. It makes it a lot easier. But JJ's on the way. He's always taking forever. Sorry, JJ, calling you out. Always taking forever. So I was kind of wanting to wait on him before I started the video, but went ahead and got started. What I'm going to do now is go ahead and set up the camera on the other side. I didn't film this side because I wanted to go ahead and get all the square words out. Obviously, I knew I was going to run into something stupid. Overall, it's not a hard job, but it's a little tedious. So. 
But definitely if you're gonna do this, go ahead and get the tow rods too. Do them both at the same time. Cause what I found is you have to remove the outer side of the tow rod anyways to get that bolt out. But that's just me. There might be other ways around it. I'm not a technician. But overall, it's not hard. It's not bad at all. But we'll go ahead and get to the other side and I'll see you all in a minute. You don't have to take the wheel off, but we're gonna go ahead and do this. It makes it a lot easier. So wheels, 19 millimeter lug. Um, I always, God, it's tight. <laughs> Hold on. Dude. Hold on. Dude. All right, so go ahead and loosen these. I think the last guy probably didn't use a torque wrench on these because these were stupid tight. Go ahead and just crack your lug nuts loose. Obviously, don't pull them all the way off. Um, that's going to be your first step. All right, so kind of hard to see, but next thing you want to do is just go ahead and jack up uh, the rear end. Literally have this on the diff with a couple 2x4s on it and uh, JJ is going to go ahead and start lifting it up now. What you want to do is just kind of get the wheels up off of the ground. JJ is over there jacking it. Jacking it. I'm a pro. He's a pro. I've done this before. <laughs> Should be good. To be safe, go ahead and put your uh, jack stands under here. Little notch right up here. I'm gonna do this side. JJ's gonna go hit the other side. But once you've done that, go ahead and lower it down real slow. What we do is we'll leave the jack back there for extra support. That's good, it's resting on the jack stands. We still got our jack back down the diff. Now we'll go ahead and pull the wheel off. You're doing a lot of jacking and pulling for you today. <laughs> if you look here, this is the outer side of the tra uh, trailing arm. Is that boasting, which I'll show you guys here in a minute. These are two 18 millimeter bolts. Well, you've got a bolt in the nut. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put my 18 box wrench on this side with the nut on it. I'm gonna hold that. Then I'm gonna come back here to the other side. Go ahead and do that. I had to use this little breaker bar, but now that we've got that loosened, just go ahead and keep loosening her up. I'm gonna keep loosening this and then we'll be back and we'll start on the inside. All right guys, this one's got a nut welded, so you don't have to worry about putting anything on the other side on this one. This side's not gonna give you too much trouble, should come right out. Just keep working on this, it will come out. It's gonna feel a little tight, but it's completely normal. So this bolt, you're just gonna pull this out. Let me get it for you. There we go. There it is. It's our inner bolt. You can go ahead and drop that down. This is what I was telling you guys about. Try and get it here. If you look here, the control arm, when we push this bolt, it hits. And actually, this side is nowhere near as bad as the other side. It's right there. Yep. Yep. So you can see here, we're not getting past that. I'll be right back, guys. I'll show you what to do. All right, guys. So this is our tow rod. Technically, you probably should measure it, but we're not going to. It should not affect the alignment that I know of. <laughs> <laughs> Either way, I plan on doing an alignment anyways since yeah. I'm doing this. So go ahead and pull this. Now, this is gonna pop once you pull it out because there is some tension on it. But don't worry about that. Oh, there it. it. <laughs> so that's what it's gonna do. Whee! It's gonna pop up. But now that you've got that loosened, and by the way, if you're watching this, hopefully you already have your tow rods. So now that you've got that loosened, you can come back in here to this bolt, kind of shimmy this, comes right out. Little trick so you don't have to pull off your control arm and all that crap. <laughs> all right guys, so this is a little tool I borrowed from Mike down the road with the 79. Now this, I'll show you how to press this bearing out. You could get a legit tool to do this, but this is very similar. I don't even know what you would call this. I mean, it's, it's some kind of press. I would imagine it's probably not made for this, but we made it work. Um, so give me one second, I'll pop this old bushing out, and we're gonna show you how to do it. A lot of people, they cut the outside of these bushings so they can get a grip. Um, you don't actually have to do that. I'm gonna show you why. Just grab onto it the best you can, honestly. In theory, yeah, you'd wanna cut it so you can get a grip, because right now, all we're really doing is kinda like counter pushing back on where we're trying to take it off, but I wanna show you guys um, why this actually does work and it works very well This to me just seems a lot easier than risking cutting your freaking finger open Trying to pull this out. So we're just gonna do it this way. So here's our little press tool 
you can see right here I've got this under here now this is not designed or made for this car so it's a little tough but it's gonna work so you can see it's biting down on that bushing right there so all basically all you want to do is just tighten this start feeling some tension Keep in mind this thing's also coming and biting back at me, but you can already see we're getting some gap right there. Once we get enough gap, I'm going to pull this back off and then I'm going to bite on the spindle itself. Now I understand what you were saying when you were telling me about it. That's, that yeah, so I can good. come back here and bite in now. Well, that's the idea. And there she is. So that one didn't come as good or out as good as the other one, but <laughs> still, it came out. We got it out. All right, so I'm gonna go grab. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I saw you. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> All right, guys, I'm gonna go grab the new bushings right now. I'll show you how to put those in. And we'll go ahead and pop these trailing arms on. So we've got two right here. That's rubber. This is polyurethane. Obviously, better. Gonna be stiffer, but we're gonna put one on each side of the spindle. We're actually gonna put a little bit of lube on here, which is funny, they advertise this as lube. It's not really luby, it kind of sticks and it makes everything really hard to get in. This lube is from BMR. This isn't exactly necessary. Um, I just wanna get tons of lube on here as much as I can, but what BMR says to do is just pop these in and what you wanna do is grease the insides for when you're putting the sleeve in, but I just want to definitely loop it up as much as I could. So just going to set this here. Definitely a tight squeeze, but it'll go. Don't listen to him go all natural. Huh? I <laughs> said so don't listen to him go all natural. Yeah. <laughs> JJ says don't listen to me, just go in dry. <laughs> don't go in dry. <laughs> I mean, whatever, but... So I don't know if you guys can see, I'm just kind of kind of push this in with the palm of my hand. Squeeze on the other side. It's a tight fit, but it will work. All right. Mm -hmm. Looks good. So I've got our bushing in. What I'm going to do is I'm actually, I'm going to put lube in there like BMR says. But I'm just going to spray. Wish I had spray lube, I don't. <laughs> Got a redneck it and use some armor on, but adapt and overcome. Go ahead and lube up the inside per BMR, what they tell you to do. So go ahead and <laughs> can you see that? <laughs> yeah, go ahead and um, Just yeah, finger your damn Car. thing. <laughs> you never have enough, it's always room for more. This is kind of like a reach around effect here. I gotta. The things we do for our car. Yeah, ow! <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I literally, if you've got some spray lube, do that. Don't, don't use armor all. <laughs> Whatever, I mean. Look, I'm trying to get this thing in there because it was very, very hard last It's time. slippery, it works, yeah. All right, so we're using this C-clamp with a rag to push this. Not all the way in, but I gotta check this bushing. Oh yeah, we're good. So I just need to come back in just a little more. Flush. Yep. That is successfully installed. Now the fun part is we're gonna go ahead and put everything back. Did you happen to bring your little jack? I did, 100%. We'll be right back. JJ's gonna grab his jack real quick. <laughs> there there it is. goes. <clears throat> All right, go ahead and lower it. Lower it? Yep. Or you won't get... Yeah, go ahead it. and lower it. All right, so I've got that <laughs> Got that bolt. I'm just going to set the nut right here, just kind of hold it. All right. Now, this part's kind of weird, too. You'll notice it may or may not line up the first time. 
As you can see our holes are not lined up. So this is where we're gonna come back to the tow rods. Now I'll show you guys here. We'll put this back up in here. So our holes are not lined up yet. So we're gonna keep cranking down on this. Now as I tighten this, it should start lining this back up. All right guys, Jeremy here taking over for JJ. Um, what you're gonna kinda wanna do, you're gonna have to finagle that. It's actually better leave that um, outer tow rod off and basically it'd be better if you have somebody but you're going to want to kind of push against the rotor to where you can get that to sit where it belongs down there on the inside and once you do that you can go ahead and start cranking back down on this uh, remember go ahead and torque these once you've got everything in to 85 foot pounds and last thing don't forget make sure to grease this DMR makes it super easy. Just pop this right on there. I will grease the crap out of this thing too, which I'm pumping a lot in there. Yeah, you can never have too much. See? Yeah, it's popping out right there. So, I guess. That's what I do. When you start seeing the grease coming out, that's when I uh, go ahead and call it good. That's pretty much it. We're just gonna put the wheel back on, take it for a quick drive, see how everything goes, fingers crossed. We have everything in. Gonna go out for a test drive, make sure we didn't goof anything up, but everything should be fine. Okay, in the car, guys. Gonna fire this thing up. Strapped in. Take Mike his tools. JJ hadn't been in the harness in forever. It's been a while. It's like a wannabe harness. <laughs> it's been a minute. Oh my God. Stupid harness, my keys are in my hood. <laughs> it's not a world big harness, it is a harness. Right, let's do this. Before I start it, I'm just gonna kinda roll forward, let the suspension settle. <laughs> yeah, it's not budging. <laughs> or not, apparently my garage is like perfectly flat, so. All right, well let's fire it up. Yesterday morning, I drove it. A little bit of slippage coming out of the neighborhood when it was cold, but there's no slippage right now. I even did a wide open first to second. It didn't budge, so confusing. Railroad track, Railroad track test. up real quick go to Mike's but right now everything feels fine but we'll, might run it a little bit harder just to kind of see but yeah be right back guys all right back in the car you, what you say you want to push it a little bit right here what's he doing I mean send it we're gonna send it full send oh, let me strip in first though Thanks. yeah right <laughs> let me strip in. we already got some looks pulling into the gas station but honestly uh well, probably about where I live, where you live too, you don't really see a lot like this other than me, you, Mike, and Dave. That's about it. Oh, except for that one guy. Oh, shit. I might sound like a kind of idiot, but it's like only wet under your car where you were just pumping gas. It's it was there when we pulled up. Okay. I, I know. I smelled it too. It's not wet else. Okay, I, I had to look under to make sure when we got here. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.
Alright, anyways guys, we will see you on the next video.